Hey guys, welcome back to the General Wellness YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back in today and for all of your answers on Instagram about what common topics or just nutrition questions that you want answered. In today's video, I'm going to be answering the question about food additives. So sometimes on food labels, there's crazy ingredients and normally I say if there's crazy ingredients on it, don't consume it. Just eat real food that doesn't have all these different things in it. But there are three additives that we're going to be going over today, guar gum, xanthan gum, and carrageenan. We're going to be explaining what the heck these are, why they might be in food ingredients, and if they're healthy to consume. Also a disclaimer, I'm not even sure that I'm pronouncing these right, so there's that. Sometimes these food additives are going to get a lot of flack in the media because they can be used in food, but they can also be used for industrial uses. So some of them are in different household cleaning supplies or in used in like oil production and different things like that or cosmetics even. But that doesn't mean that they're not safe to consume, it just means that they have properties that maybe give thickness or viscosity to liquids that might be needed in those other industries as well. So like always, don't let the media fool you, but know the facts, and that's what I'm here for. So let's dive into the video in these three additives. The first one we're gonna be going over today is guar gum, G-U-A-R gum. I'm thinking that's how you pronounce it, but not entirely sure. But it is used as a thickener and a stabilizer because it is such a soluble fiber. So when it goes into our stomachs or when it goes into these different food products, it gives them kind of a thickness, a viscosity that might be needed. So it might be used in cheese products to prevent weeping, which happens like if you're if you're melting cheese or just cheeses there in general, it might start to have like liquid dripping out of it, which sounds gross. But it's a natural thing that happens with cheeses or cheese sauces and things like that whenever you're cooking, and this prevents that from occurring. One cool thing about guar gum, though, is that it has been shown in different studies to actually help promote blood sugar stabilization and even lower cholesterol because soluble fiber helps lower cholesterol, and that's exactly what this is. So weirdly enough, when it's added into foods as a food additive to help stabilize things, it actually might be promoting lower cholesterol as well. So additive number one, guar gum has been extensively studied and is safe to consume. Additive number two is xanthan gum and it performs almost the exact same things that guar gum does. It's a thickener, it's a stabilizer, and helps just add soluble fiber into the food products that it's in. This one is not as widely studied, but they have proven that it does cause no adverse effects. It does not cause cancer because that is always extensively studied whenever there's food additives that need to be approved to add in food. But it also hasn't been shown to have any of the blood stabilizing effects like guar gum does. So it doesn't necessarily do anything to cholesterol or to blood glucose. There are a few studies that say in large amounts, if you're consuming just like a, a food product that has a ton of xanthan gum in it or a lot of that food product, you might experience stomach pain, but there's no bad thing that's actually happening in your body other than it's just causing some stomach pain. So while it hasn't been as widely studied, xanthan gum is still very safe to consume. The third and final food additive is carrageenan. I pronounce it carrageenan, other people might pronounce it a little bit differently, but I did an entire research paper over this in graduate school when I was getting my master's in nutrition because it's quite the hot topic. If you search carrageenan on YouTube, you'll actually find a lot of different people, not nutrition experts, but people, giving their opinion on carrageenan because it's found in things like almond milk. The reason I studied it was because it's found in infant formula too. So we were just kind of seeing the different additives in infant formula and whether or not they were helpful or harmful. The reason carrageenan gets a lot of flack in the media is because there is a second compound that's actually um, similar but not the same. It used to be called degraded carrageenan. This actually has been shown to cause cancer and all kinds of different terrible things. But because it's not the same compound and the names were very similar and confusing, this one over here is actually called polygenin now and is not the same as carrageenan that we actually put in our food. Polygenin has been studied a lot and is very, very harmful, even causing cancer in mice and rats, so it would obviously cause this in humans as well. Carrageenan, on the other hand, does not cause any of that. There is no need to worry about carrageenan as a whole. It is just, again, added to stabilize things, to thicken things, just like almond milk or infant formula, that they're found in this liquid state, and we want them to kind of stay that way and not 
um, separate the different compounds. You want it to stay a homogeneous mixture. And so that's what carrageenan does and is used for. So our third and final food additive, carrageenan, just like the other two, is perfectly safe to consume. For the purpose of this video, I couldn't go over all additives, but if there are specific additives that you want to hear about or that you're curious about, comment in the section below and I can try to make a video on those as well. Don't listen to everything that you hear on the internet. Instead, be sure to find science-backed facts that are going to form your opinions about nutrition, health, and wellness topics. As always, thank you for tuning into my channel. Be sure to subscribe with the link below and like this video so that other people can find general wellness and hopefully find the truth about nutrition and wellness.